The concept of a royal family being wiped out and their name erased from a royal peerage is something very few can imagine, but it has happened. Amongst the gruesome examples, one royal execution stands out through the grayness of the events and the cruelty of the alleged defender of justice, the Tabora Affair. On the 1st of November 1755, an earthquake and tsunami destroyed Lisbon, turning the royal palace into rubble. King Joseph I of Portugal and his family then took up residence in what's supposed to be a temporary tent complex in Ajuda on the city's outskirts. King Joseph surrounded himself with his staff, led by Sebastián José de Carvalho Melo, his prime minister. Sebastián was a strict and stern man, the son of a country squire, and he built himself up to become the prime minister. He held a grudge against the old nobility, and the feelings were mutual. Their clashes were tolerated by the king, who placed too much trust in Sebastián for his leadership after the earthquake. King Joseph was married to Mariana Victoria of Spain, Infanta of Spain, and they had four daughters together. Despite his happy domestic life, he had a favorite mistress, Teresa Leonor. She was married to Francisco Assis, Count of Alvor, and former Viceroy of India. The Taboras were among the most influential and ancient families in the kingdom, and they were also related to the houses of Aveiro, Cadaval, and Alorna. They were the sworn enemies of Sebastián de Melo, who despised him for his peasant blood. Leonor, a hot-blooded woman, was concerned as she thought Sebastián had no right to be in the position he was in since he wasn't a noble with class or name. She was also a fervent Catholic, influenced by the Jesuits, and her confessor, Gabriel Malagrida. On the 9th of September 3rd, 1758, King Joseph traveled in an unmarked carriage through the back roads of Lisbon. He was returning to the tent palace from a rendezvous with Teresa when highwaymen intercepted him. Both he and the driver were injured, but could escape and make it back to the tents. Sebastián took immediate control of the situation, keeping the events and the wounds close to his chest to conduct a speedy investigation. A few days later, two men were arrested and confessed under torture, being hired by the Tabora family, who paid them to kill the king so the Duke of Aveiro, José Mascarenas, could take the throne. The next day, the men were executed for regicide. In the subsequent weeks, Teresa Leonor, the Count of Alvor, their children, grandchildren, the Duke of Alveiro, the Marquis of Aloma, and the Count of Atugia, as well as their children and wives, were arrested. In addition, Jesuit confessor Gabriel Malagrida and other priests and monks were also arrested. They were all accused of high treason and attempted regicide. The evidence was simple. The confessions of the dead highwaymen and the weapon used that belonged to the Duke of Aveiro, and the fact that only the Taboras could know where the king was at that hour because he had been with Teresa that night. The Taboras denied all charges, but they were all convicted and sentenced to death. The intervention of Queen Mariana and Princess Maria Francisca, future Queen Maria I, saved the lives of some of the children and women, but Teresa didn't have that pardon and was sentenced to death. They were publicly executed on January 13, 1759, in a Lisbon field. Even by the 1700s standards, the execution was excessively violent. First, their arms and legs were fractured with a sledgehammer, and then they were decapitated. Some 60 members of the family were executed via the breaking wheel, burned alive, strangled, and beheaded. The Duke of Aveiro was seen as the leader of the conspiracy. Finally, their bodies were burned and the ashes thrown into the Tajo River. The king and the court were present. The court was horrified, and the nobles, who, remember, were related to the Tavaras, begged the king and Sebastian to stop. But both men wanted everybody to understand this is what happened if you rebelled against the king. The palace of the Duke of Aveiro in Belém, Lisbon was destroyed. The ground was salted, their name erased from the peerage, and in the rubble of the palace, a structure with a tablet and an inscription was built. It is said it's a public urinal. 
In 1761, Jesuit Gabriel Malagrida was born alive after the Jesuits were declared illegal in 1759. Their property was confiscated and they were expelled from Portugal and Brazil. The Alorna family and the daughters of the Duke of Aveiro were sentenced to life and lived on the reclusion in monasteries and convents. Doña Ana and Doña Inés de Tabora, daughters and sisters of those executed, moved to Spain with their children to live under the aid of noble loyals to the Tabora and Aveiro families. But, unfortunately, history doesn't remember them after that. The man who ordered this, Sebastián de Melo, was named Conde of Oveira for his aid during the crisis. In the 1770s, he was granted the title of Marqués de Pombal. The question remains, were they guilty? Historians question the guilt of the Tabora family. For one part, the stormy relationship between the aristocracy and King Joseph I is well documented. The lack of a male heir was an issue for them, and the Duke of Aveiro was the favorite choice of the aristocrats once King Joseph I died. He, however, didn't mind if his daughter Maria got the throne. On the other hand, the Tabora family's death and the Jesuits' expulsion meant Sebastian had gotten rid of all of his biggest enemies. The Tabora's defense was obvious. The king was in an unmarked carriage for a back road on the outskirts of Lisbon, which everyone knew was heavily transited by highwaymen, as well as the fact no one in the family or related to them tried to run away after the attempted regicide. Guilty or not, this execution shook Europe as it took place when the death penalty was becoming less used, and the execution of a well-known family was horrifying. Aristocratic houses across the continent silently hated Sebastián. The heir to the throne, Maria Francisca, hated Sebastián. Once she reached the throne, she stripped him of his responsibilities and exiled him from Lisbon, dictating a decree prohibiting his presence at 20 miles from the capital. An impartial investigation rehabilitated the image of the Tabora family, but it was kept secret. Sebastián was convicted, but he wasn't physically punished due to old age. The Tabora affair is one of the darkest chapters of real history, as an entire family was stripped from their decency and sentenced to an unfair trial where innocents suffer. Despite Queen Maria I trying to rehabilitate their image, the Tabora name will forever be tied to a chapter dark as night and submerging tragedy. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.